Welcome to the Centre for Legal Innovation's first webinar for 2020 in the Legal Techie Tuesday series presented in association with the Lander and Rogers Law Tech Hub powered by YBF Ventures. We are very excited to have Fiona and Tim Kirkman here with us today from Family Property. Fiona is the CEO and legal founder and Tim is the CTO and technical founder. They will be giving us a demonstration of the family property tech tool built for the entire family law ecosystem. Before I hand over to Fiona and Tim, I just want to mention a few quick housekeeping matters. Please switch off your webcams and microphones for the duration of the webinar. You will not be able to switch these on at any time unless Fiona and Tim permit you to do so. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, you'll find a button at the bottom of your screen titled Q&A. Please feel free to jot down any questions. Fiona and Tim will see those and address them at the end of the session. And finally, a reminder that we will be recording this webinar. So again, thank you, welcome, Fab fabulous to have you here. And now over to Fiona and Tim. Thank you, Christine. And thank you to the Centre for Legal Innovation and Lander and Rogers Law Tech Hub powered by YBF Ventures for hosting this family property webinar. And thank you for jo joining us today, um, taking time out to learn how you can better conduct family property settlement matters. So just an introduction of ourselves. Um, I'm Fiona Kirkman. I have a background as an accredited specialist in family law. I'm a mediator, family dispute resolution practitioner and lecturer. And as Christine said, I bring that legal foundation to family property and am the CEO of the company. Tim? Yeah, I'm Tim Kirkman. So I'm the CTO of Family Property. My role really is um, spearheading the uh, the development, um, managing the roadmap, support, maintenance, and everything really technical that goes into Family Property. Uh, so I love hearing about how, um, from you how you're using Family Property, and uh, we continue to um, improve it um, based on the feedback um, that we we get from you. And the other founding member of family property is Professor Patrick Parkinson AM um, and he had the original idea for family property and approached us as a couple in law and technology um, to build out the, the product in accordance with that idea. So why did we create family property? Um, well running a family property matter and mediation today can be quite error prone with many calculations um, and proposals and it can be quite manual and unstructured and time consuming and can be quite complex. Um, so what our aim was with family property is to um, make it a more streamlined approach and to automate the parts of then, uh, parts of a property settlement that can be automated, leaving you as family law professionals to focus on the work that hopefully you love to do, um, which is the outcomes and the negotiations, um, and free you up from doing that admin work. So the family property solution, um, what we aim to do is everything from the commencement of a family property settlement matter to the conclusion of a matter. So from inquiry, um, getting the, the matter in your door um, to client intake through an online smart form to collate the relevant information to a secure client portal where you can collate the relevant documents and have those indexed against the relevant item. And then we have a very unique, innovative and interactive balance sheet. Um, that balance sheet enables you to model, compare and save proposals. So what is a 50-50 look like? What is a 60-40 look like, et cetera? Um, then you have the capacity in family property to use our powerful document automation engine to download um, a balance sheet, consent orders, financial statement, chronology, and various other documents, really saving you time um, and money in the, the process. Um, so that's the solution. We'll demo that today for you. Um, as I said, family property is really aimed at making property settlement matters more accurate, um, particularly around those numbers, um, automating what can be automated through technology, freeing you up to 
focus on outcomes, make it more structured and more simplified. Um, so with regards to what it helps them firms do, um, it increases the, the productivity of your firm. So the aim is to increase product productivity, enabling you to do more um, property settlement work. Um, it improves the outcomes, providing a more streamlined um, questionnaire and a, a process for your clients. And it also reduces the non-billable work and that admin work enabling you to focus on the negotiations um, and the legal or mediation work that you do. So what we're going to do now is move into the demo. Just want confirmation if somebody could type in that they can um, see us okay and see the, the demo as we bring that up. That would be helpful. Yep, so just making sure if someone could just type in that they can see and hear us okay, just before we get into the live demo, uh, you should be able to see on the screen there um, my web browser, just making sure you can see my screen that says My Matters. Uh, look, yep, looking good. You can see, fantastic. Okay, great. So I'm just going to refresh my browser, make sure that I'm all still logged in so this demo goes smoothly. Uh, so let me just take a moment to introduce uh, to you um, Family Property. If you haven't seen it before, when you first log into Family Property, this is the screen that you'll see. And from here, you'll have access to all of the matters um, that you have been, you've either created or someone's provided access to you. Um, and you can also get started with creating a new matter. And to do that, we'll just quickly show you how you can do that in Family Property uh, just by clicking this big Create a Matter button here. Now, Family Property can be configured um, to work um, both if you're a single party uh, representative um, of one party, for instance, a solicitor, um, but Family Property can also work um, where you might be the neutral in the matter, for instance, a mediator. So depending on how you would like to set up the matter, depending on how you're going to work with the parties, you can either select single party or both parties. Um, Today, I'm going to uh, just um, set up a really quick one here um, as a as the lawyer. So I'm just typing in some details here. Um, and then there's two ways that you can get started with populating the, and collecting the information um, on the matter. So the first way is that you can use an intake questionnaire. The intake questionnaire uh, you can complete on behalf of your client um, or you can go through it um, with them. Um, Alternatively, or in addition to, you can also invite your client to complete the intake questionnaire. And if you want to do that, you just tick this box here and you put in your client's email address. Now, if you do that, they will receive an email with instructions on how to get started. They click a link um, and then they will be taken straight into the questionnaire and they can complete that in their own space and time. Now, that's a completely optional step. It's up to you. What you can also do, another way that you can populate information into family property, into a family property matter, is through our dashboard. And at the heart of our dashboard, it's a single screen, um, and at the heart of it is um, the balance sheets um, and a complete library of automated documents as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this matter um, between Terry Smith and Christy Smith, and I'm going to move straight into the dashboard, and I'll actually show you the questionnaire uh, later on. So let's create this matter. You can see it's been added to my list here, and I'm just going to go into it. And what you see here is the dashboard. Now, I'm going to take you through this in a little bit more detail in a while, but I just want to introduce you to a, a few different ways that you can start populating this information that you see here into the balance sheet. Um, so the first way is that you can go over to the right-hand side here and click Add, and I could choose to add an asset. And then the form appears on the right-hand side, and I can enter in the details quickly around who owns it. Is it in joint names or a particular party? What type of asset it is? Can give it a description summary um, and also a proposed value. And I can do that for assets, liabilities, and superannuation funds, adding in the line items individually one by one here um, into my balance sheet. Another way, though, to get information into family property when it comes to working with your balance sheet is to import one. So if you have already um, built up a, uh, the family court's um, balance format balance sheet, either in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, or you've been provided with one of those, you can import them straight into family property. So just uh, to show you what I'm talking about here, I'm just going to open one up. Hope you can see the Microsoft Word file there on the screen. You can see that this is partially complete. 
with some assets and liabilities and superannuation. And so this is the balance sheet in Microsoft Word that I'm going to import today. So all I do is go to balance sheets, click import balance sheet. I then nominate whether my party in this balance sheet is the applicant or the respondent, and I just identify how they've been um, effectively identified in that ownership column. Uh, because there's no real standard way on identifying, uh, sometimes H or W is used, or the, the applicant respondents used, or their names, just to find how it is populated in the Microsoft Word file. In this case, we have used... Let me bring that back up again. J for joint, uh, W for wife, and H for husband. But as I said, it may vary. So just have a look how it's filled in there and then just provide the details in here. Next thing you want to do is just click on uh, browse and you want to find that file that I just showed you. Family property will go through and analyze it and give you a summary of what it's about to import there. And I just click import. And so what this does now with a click of a button, I now have that Microsoft Word file has been imported onto the screen for me. So I can see all of the assets and the liabilities and the superannuation funds have been imported into my balance sheet for me. So I just wanted to show you that because that's a really super popular way of getting information into family property. If you've already got a balance sheet, is you can import it straight in. So what I might do now is actually go to another matter which has a little bit more information in it and um, introduce you to how the dashboard works in a little bit more detail. So what you can see here is Joy's working balance sheet, and this has been uh, populated with a bit more information. Um, but what I'll do is introduce you to... Um, I'll actually come back to the balance sheet, but I'm just going to show you where you can store other information in relation to this matter. So. Um, under personal details here, you'll see uh, there's panels for storing information relating to their personal details, um, relationship details, uh, children, their current living arrangements, income, and also expenses. And it's really easy to use. So, for instance, if I want to um, change some details about their relationship, I just click in on this box and you see that the form appears on the right-hand side. And so I can populate the information in here putting in um, the dates around when they began living together, what their current relationship status is, whether they're separated, divorced, the fact they're married, and put in those key details around the, the relationship when they were married, for instance, in this case, and where they got married. And I can click into any of these boxes and continue to populate the information related to these particular details all the way down to income and expenses. Now, underneath the considerations tab here, there's two key important sections. The first is contributions. And so you can see here that we've got a list of contributions that have already been start, um, started to be built up. Um, and I can add contributions here by clicking add. Choose who contributed, whether it was contributed by Joy or Jack, the other party. What type of contribution was it, whether it was monetary income, uh, a welfare or, or another type of contribution. And what stage in the relationship it was contributed, whether it was at the start, during or post separation. And then I can define a value or a level of that contribution. So if it was monetary, I, I would probably put in a financial amount. Um, if it was non-monetary, then I might put um, another indicator, for instance, primary carer uh, or homemaker there as the description. Now, for in everything in family property, um, there will be a uh, additional information section. And if I open up this, I can provide um, additional notes, for instance, on this contribution here. But what I can also do is add chronology entries too. So if I open up this, and uh, what I can do is um, I can select a date and give it a description. And I can store as many chronology entries against anything in family property. So for a contribution, for instance, it might be uh, when the inheritance was received uh, for a particular asset. It might have been when the home was refinanced or renovations were completed or any other key dates in relation to the matter. So you can store chronology entries just by going into the additional information and adding those details in there. You'll see that the contributions are arranged in those three stages at the start of the relationship, during the relationship, and since separation. Um, and then there is a statement here around contributions overall. And if I click in on this box here, um, as a professional, I can um, put in, in um, detail here around whether I believe that my client's overall contribution was lower, equal or higher, compared to the other parties and provide comments there. 
Underneath that, you'll see that there is a section for future needs. Um, and if I click in on this box here, I can provide um, details around how my client's financial situation may be affected. Then these can be things like difference in earning capacity, state of health, age, maybe a primary care or, or any other reason, and I can provide details. And there are a few other questions and information that I can provide there. Just like the contribution section, there is a future needs overall panel that I can click on and again provide details around how I see my client's future needs situation is, um, whether that's less, equal, greater than um, compared to the other parties and provide additional comments there. At the moment, um, with these contributions and future needs, um, as you know, there's not a formulaic approach to property settlements. Um, so we're not providing predictive analysis around um, what the percentage should be. Um, we <laughs> enable you to do that as the professional, um, but it's a very useful way of summarising what those relevant Section 79 um, and Section 75 two factors are um, for the relevant considerations for a property settlement. Um, and of course, when we we come to the reporting section, um, there is a report around these considerations as well. It's a very useful snapshot as to the relevant contributions. Um, and on these panels, as you can see, there's some numbers on this, the site. Um, in each of these contributions and when we come to the balance sheet, there are some recommendations around uploading of documents to perhaps confirm the identity and value of the lump sums received. Um, and if there was any documents, um, they'll be attached to that particular item. I mean, you can request and upload documents against any item um, in that dashboard. As Tim said, there's also that choice to add a date, um, which will then be in the chronology report um, when that is generated. So as you can see here, additional information, chronology entries there, and then at the top, attachments, and you can select a file to attach. Um, and if you say been emailed at the information, um, it's just a case of uploading. You can upload as many documents as you'd like and upload those documents straight into the portal, not just against the matter, but the particular item. Um, so feel free if you as we go, if you have any questions, as Christine said, um, please feel free to add any further questions to the Q&A um, box there or the chat. Mm -hmm. um, so what we'll do now is go back to the balance sheet and we might show you some of the important features of the balance sheet and how you can model, compare and save proposals. Mm. So here's the um, balance sheet. So this is um, my working balance sheet for Joy. And if you think about it just like an Excel spreadsheet, but on steroids, um, it, it's a good way of looking at it. So uh, just like any normal balance sheet, it is divided into assets at the top. And then you have a list of liabilities underneath. Uh, you can see that there's lots of sub calculations. So everything is auto calculated in this balance sheet. Um, underneath that, you have superannuation and then your outcome, which gives you a running um, total um, asset pool calculation and also um, overall outcome, which we will talk about in a bit more detail in a moment. Just to highlight though, underneath the balance sheet, there is a place to put financial resources and disposed assets. And if you wanna add any records there, again, you just click the add button on the side and you fill in the details around that financial resource or the disposed asset and it will automatically be added to the list for you. So back up to the balance sheet, let's just talk about um, how the balance sheet works. So I can, first of all, um, continue to build out my balance sheet manually by adding new items. I can click in on any of these and continue to make any changes and updates as I need to. I can review any documents that I might have uploaded against each item. And I can change the value quite easily just by clicking here and changing the value of the item. Uh, now, in family property, you can um, model more um, ad advanced and complex matters. Uh, so as an example, one um, scenario that is quite common um, is the need to build up sub-balance sheets. So wherever you've got a business, a trust, a self-managed super fund or an investment of any description, as soon as you add one of those entities to your balance sheet, so for instance, I've got Jack's Plumbing here, uh, you can then start to build up sub-balance sheets. 
So I've clicked on this link here and it's now shown me the sub balance sheet for Jack's Plumbing. You can see that there's um, a, a list of assets and liabilities. You'll also notice that we give you a running subtotal of the sub balance sheet too, but we do keep the valuation of, um, in this case, the business um, independent to the auto calculation of the sub balance sheet. And the reason for that is because there's a variety of different ways that especially businesses uh, can be valued, uh, factoring in lots of considerations such as goodwill. So I can come in here and I could put my overall valuation of the business in. Now, if you want to build up a sub balance sheet, it's really easy to do. Just add one of those entities, a business, a trust, a self-managed super fund. And the next time you go to add and either select an asset or a liability, what you'll find is under who owns this asset, as well as selecting in joint names or the parties, you'll see that those entities, the business, the trust, the self-managed super fund will appear as entities that you can then assign assets and liabilities to. And then as soon as I add that new asset, it will appear in the sub-balance sheet. Another really powerful thing you can do in family property when it comes to working with your balance sheet is connecting liabilities and assets together. So as you can see here, we have an investment property in Colin Gatta. And what we've got is we've got a mortgage which is attached to um, the real estate property. Now you'll notice that the mortgage isn't down here in liabilities, it's actually been attached to the asset. And the reason why we've done that is so that what we can do is we can start to get the net position, what that means for the parties, if the mortgage or any other liabilities attached to this real estate property are discharged. So what I can actually see is that um, there is that the valuation of, of the property is $702,000. But if you were to remove the mortgage and any other associated costs, you can actually see what that means for the parties in terms of the, their net position. Um, and so connecting liabilities is super simple too. So if I just click on this liability, um, I have this additional option here, which is I can connect this liability to, and I just select the asset that I want to connect it to. And that's all I need to do. I can disconnect that at any point in time just by selecting the blank option, and it would move it back down underneath the liability section. Now, when it comes to um, uh, putting together an offer in um, family property, uh, what we've got um, what we've we built, we've built into the balance sheet is these really powerful sliders. And so what you can see here is that I've now populated my balance sheet. And I've got some values in there. And how these sliders work, they appear on the right-hand side, is that I've got Joyce and my client on the left-hand column. I've got Jack, the other party, on the right. And what I do is I just grab this slider with my mouse. And if I want to, for instance, model um, transferring the ownership of the family home to Joy because it's in joint names, I move it over to the left-hand side. If I want to propose to transfer it to Jack, I move it to the right-hand side. And anywhere in the middle, um, because it's an asset, we're, is, we're proposing to sell it. For instance, dropping it right there in the middle, we're proposing that the action is that we're going to um, sell it. And so I can do this for each and every one of these items. For instance, um, changing the ownership of Jack's plumbing, um, uh, we're going to... Uh, for instance, uh, have Jack retain that. Um, we're going to sell and discharge the mortgage um, on the Cool and Gatta property and so on and so forth. And we've found that clients um, uh, love actually being taken through this on the screen because it's really visual. They can see exactly this is my column, that's the other column. Somewhere in between means we're going to sell it or discharge it. Um, and uh, it makes a lot more sense than staring at numbers in an Excel um, cell uh, trying to understand what a, what a number figure looks like. This is a highly visual tool. So as you can see, the figures, the calculations are all auto-calculated, assets, liabilities, super, as well as the, the outcomes and the splits, both in dollar figures and percentages. But how about as a professional, if you want to um, model what, for example, a 60-40 would look like? Um, you can do that with, with family property. You can model um, various uh, using various settings. Um, for example, a cash settlement, if you were to model a 50-50 split, um, you can either do that with a cash line adjustment or against an asset or super fund. Um, for today's purposes, let's model what a 50-50 would look like. As you could see previously, it was 42, 50, um, 57 or 58, um, but now it's a 50-50 and you'll see in the both the asset side and liability side, there's a line item of the 235247, which is the payment um, that to Joy from Jack.
So if you if you model different things again, that figure automatically changes, um, saving you a lot of time when it comes to um, errors in calculations, etc. At a click of a button, getting those figures, and then you can start to save those versions. So similar to Excel, you can manage versions, and you can have the original. Um, proposal, you can have the 50-50 offer, um, you can have the 60-40 if you want to model that, and you can start having various versions that you work with with your client um, to, to, to look at, um, some of which might formally be put to the other side, um, some of which are for, for modelling purposes. Mm. Yep. So um, I'm just going to take off this um, overall percentage outcome for a moment. Um, and put it back. So now, as you may be able to see in the footer there, it's gone back to 42%, 57%. So family property can do all of those complex calculations for you. Now, in family property, you've also got um, the ability to populate the other side's balance sheet too. So if I jump over to Jack's, um, so Jack is the other side, um, you'll see here that um, I have a completely independent balance sheet here for Jack. And so um, the reason why this is quite important is because you can then, as you get um, information um, from the other side, you can uh, come in here and then model what they're saying in terms of the assets that they've disclosed, their proposed valuations for things, and so on and so forth. This is completely independent to your clients. Um, and the good thing about um, populating both sides of the balance sheet in family property is you can then get family property to do some really neat comparisons. So for instance, if I want to see how close we are to an agreement, comparing my party's balance sheet versus the other party's balance sheet, I just click here. And what you'll see is the family property then uh, analyzes that and it's telling me that we're in agreement, in this case, across all liabilities and superannuation. Um, but what to Jack's Avenue um, is in both parties' balance sheets, which is good, but we actually disagree on the valuation. Uh, so I can see that that's where we're in dispute at the moment. And so what I could do is have a look here. Family property then intelligently goes red and green in points where we agree, but also red in points where we disagree. So I can see here by hovering over my mouse um, that their proposal is $2 million compared to mine, which is 2.1. And so I could uh, change that, bring it into agreement, and the valuation and the slider automatically go green to indicate that now across both balance sheets, we're now in agreement um, on that item. So it makes it really simple um, and efficient for you uh, to, to model not only your own proposals, um, but also uh, you know, working um, with the information that the other party does give you. So once you've um, modeled a particular proposal in family property, um, and, uh, and you're ready to start generating some documents, you can do that too. So what you can do in family property um, when you want to start generating documentation from what you see on the screen is you can just go to more and go to documents. And uh, do you want to introduce some of the documents you can generate? So there's a whole library of documents and we're continuing to build this out. Um, the questionnaire, which we'll show you shortly, um, you can have a questionnaire report, um, dashboard export, which is an export of everything in family property, um, the balance sheet in Word or Excel, which we'll show you, um, as well as the proposals, both parties' proposals or this party's proposal only, as well as the draft financial statement, um, a heads of agreement document, the draft application for consent orders, those matter considerations, um, matter chronology, um, and some document indexes and matter recommendations. So just showing you a few of those documents, um, how at a click of a button, this generates um, the balance sheet as you uh, as the court often uses this word in Word or Excel spreadsheet version. Um, this balance sheet brings across the assets, liabilities, superannuation, values from Joe's side, Jack's side, and the totals at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to the proposals, the proposals document, mm -hmm. um, the proposals document itself um, sets out what Joy's proposal is. So what is her proposal as to um, the splits and then the outcome and what does that equate to in percentage terms? Um, as well as some, if there's, Sub balance sheets or connected liabilities, and there's some further information about that as well. 
Um, another report which is quite handy is the Heads of Agreement report. The Heads of Agreement is often used by mediators if there's any mediators in the room. This report itself uh, brings across a number of the technologies. Um, one, family property, if you've added any dates into the balance sheet or the considerations um, items, then those dates will um, come across into this chronology report. It should be noted that all of these documents are templates and therefore you can add them or add additional, add your logo, etc. cetera, um, and that's really helpful to um, have that chronology pre-populated. Secondly, family property intelligently brings the wording. Um, at the moment, we do the heads of agreement, so it's the standard um, wording as to the parties will sell within a certain time, um, the property and what the estimated split will be on that, um, the parties will retain will transfer the credit card to Joy, um, what will happen with superannuation. It's really handy that it auto-populates um, this, the, the wording, um, and then it comes down to the financial effect of the agreement. There's two different reports here, um, and this financial effect lists what will Joy receive versus what Jack receives, um, both in outcome and percentages. So all of that's available um, in one document, or, um, or separate documents in family property. As I said, we also auto-populate the draft financial statement and the draft application for consent orders. We'll show you the draft financial statement now. Um, the draft financial statement, um, it will list the party's details. Go down. Um, the assets, superannuation, liabilities, et cetera. So um, here, the property, it will auto-populate the details of the assets, the values, the share, um, and add additional boxes if there's more than one motor vehicle, for example, or more than one super fund. Um, same with liabilities or auto-calculating those documents financial resources will be added in as well as disposal of um, property. Um, so that's really helpful to be able to get a good start on the, the financial statement population. Um, it's the same with the application for consent orders. Um, any questions as we go through, um, feel free to add those into the, the Q&A box. What we might show you briefly now is um, if the, you wanted to invite your client to complete the questionnaire to get the information into family property, how do you do that? Hmm. So um, when you set up the matter, you can invite your client to complete the questionnaire, but you can also do that at any other point in time. So once you've created the matter and you're in the dashboard, I can go back to users here and I could choose to invite my client to complete the questionnaire. Uh, so let's have a look at the questionnaire now. It's, a, it's an alternative way of um, capturing and collecting the information and populating this dashboard screen that you see here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go back to a different matter here, one that's got a little bit more information in a partially completed questionnaire for today's demo. So the questionnaire uh, looks like this. Um, now it's highly brandable. So the first thing to comment on is that you can put your own firm's logo up the top. You can change the color scheme. This introduction wording that your client may see here, you can change the wording. You can even change the subtle background image that's displayed here. So this is a, um, is a very versatile experience um, that can really adopt um, your firm's branding um, and appearance. But when you're ready or your client is ready, you just click launch questionnaire um, and this form appears here. Now we've deliberately kept this as clean and simple as possible to complete. Um, you, we've uh, so some comments on how this works is um, that all the questions are optional. So we found that it's best to get as much or as little information as your client can provide uh, without putting any roadblocks in their way. It also saves progress as you go through or your client works their way through this questionnaire. Um, it will save your progress so you can actually complete this over a, a number of sessions if need be. And it actually works really great on mobile phones too. So we found a lot of clients choose to complete this um, on their way to work or at 10.30 on the couch at night on their mobile phones and you can do that quite well 
So it's a 10-step questionnaire. We won't go into all the details today, but just to highlight um, it's the personal details in step one. Step two outlines the relationship details, and it's a smart form in that if you say divorced, then it will ask for the divorce date. If it doesn't, it, it won't ask that question. Um, step three asks about the children. If there are children, there will be subsequent questions in regards to children um, as they're relevant to financial settlements, but if there's not, it won't ask those questions. Um, step four asks about the parties as well as the children's current living arrangements and any child support um, payments. Step five looks at the income and expenses um, and you can add multiple employment options, for example. Um, step six, which is obviously a very important section, is the assets. So the family home, real estate, um, bank accounts, household contents, investments, etc. And as you can see, it, this is an adaption of the family court's financial statement um, in plain English, and it's quite easy to complete. So if there's no trust, it's a no, and you move to the next question, whereas if it's a yes, then you um, have those additional prompts of what information is required. Um, same with superannuation, some prompts around what that is, um, different types of super, and then you can continue, the client can continue to put that information in. You should note these are the same questions that are in the dashboard, which we showed you earlier. Step seven is liability, so standard mortgages, um, credit cards, tax de debts, et cetera. Again, yes, no, and add that relevant information. Step eight is the opportunity to put the other parties, what the, your client believes the other parties' assets, liabilities, and superannuation is. Why this is important is it gives um, a full picture of the balance sheet and enables you as the professional to gather more information. Contributions and future needs. Now, this is where it differs from the financial statement and really helps um, direct the parties on what's relevant by way of commit contributions, those relevant Section 79 factors at commencement during the relationship and post-separation. And it asks questions around, is there any, was there any inheritances, any financial gifts, damages awards, um, non-financial contributions such as renovations to the home, um, unemployment periods, caring for the child, um, and same since separation, any significant assets gained, et cetera. It's really direct questions that help gather all of the relevant information. Um, next is the last section is the future. So future needs, um, the relevant section 75 two factors, such as being the primary carer um, of the, the child children, the age, state of health, age, et cetera. So that's really quite a useful way of gathering the information. What then happens if you press submit, then we do have um, the opportunity to, um, what, what happens is the information is broken down and we've looked at what is the what do the family law rules require the parties to um, collate and disclose. And it gives recommendations, say the house in Albury, Cool and gather property, the bank account, um, business, etc., as to what needs to be disclosed, and then um, it's very easy to press attach, and those documents can be um, attached the click of a button from your mobile phone or computer. So you can get multiple documents um, and save save those. Um, when you go to edit. Um, you can um, mark those as, as disclosed and we'll show you that um, on how you can disclose those to the other side. So you, as you can see, it goes through the assets, um, liabilities, um, as well as superannuation and contributions and income. It also provides some recommendations. If you're a mediator, this is particularly useful um, and a lot of family relationship centres are using the, the tasks, um, whereas those task recommendations, if you go to the top, um, that will be such as doing an info track search or doing a red book search, um, that will be in the dashboard. So again, a really good prompt for you as a professional to, to know how to gather the information to identify the, the asset and the valuation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So...
So if you've got any further questions, add them to the Q&A um, box. What we're going to show you now is our integration with Ilion Bank Statements and how um, we've showed you how manually you can get the documents um, uploaded by your client. Alternatively, um, you can use Ilion Bank Statements, which is an integration we have um, to get the bank statements. Um, we'll show you how to do that. Use, so they always have the choice to do it manually or use bank statements. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you choose to use bank statements, it will be built into the questionnaire flow. So I've just worked my way through the 10 questions and then I would see this screen here that introduces Ilion Bank Statements um, and how it's relevant to the duty of disclosure. So providing all of that information around your financial situation. We always give um, the option to um, skip this stage. Um, obviously, some people may not uh, have net banking or may not um, want to use it, so they can um, skip this stage and go to the client upload screen. Uh, but if they want to, you just click on that button there. Um, and then what I do is I'm now using the um, uh, banksstatements.com.au service. I enter my name, agree to their terms, um, and then I select who I bank with. Now, um, Ilion Bank Statements does select um, support all of the, um, the major financial institutions uh, in Australia. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to select the Bank of Queensland. Um, and what you do is you just log in one time with your net banking details. Uh, don't worry, Ilion Bank Statements uh, don't store these banking details. They never pass them through to us. Uh, we don't handle them at all. It's literally just passed through to the bank um, effectively just to authorise the retrieval of those bank statements, so those PDF files that you would probably download manually. Uh, so we can see I have uh, two bank accounts here, and so I just authorise the retrieval of those um, summary statements and transaction statements in PDF. So what's happening now is bankstatements.com.au uh, is effectively doing that retrieval um, with the Bank of Queensland. Um, and then when they get those PDF files, what they do is they then analyse um, the, uh, the savings and the spending transactions. So all of that um, activity in those bank account statements um, and then generate an analytics report around um, the spending and also the saving uh, behaviours in the accounts. Uh, so you can see there, it doesn't take too long. That's now been um, authorised um, the, and the PDFs have been retrieved and the analytics um, is now being generated. Uh, we just then check to make sure that bank statements have sent those files through to us. So what we do with those um, that integration with Ilion Bank Statements is three things. Um, we'll get those bank statements and put those against the relevant bank account. Um, we'll also update the balance from the bank statements into the balance sheet. And thirdly, as we said, um, there's an analytics report um, that is provided. So as you can see here, it's auto-populated um, the information with those two bank accounts and those bank statements. We can get for the last 12 months um, of, of those bank statements a next or attached to those documents. Um, we'll show you the analytics report that is attached to that. As you can see here, um, those balances are automatically included in the balance sheet. So if you do that again in six months time, um, that information um, will be updated. And so we go into the attachments and have a look at that analytics report. This analytics report um, goes through the different um, accounts, looks at the income. Um, there is also a button to get Centrelink or MyGov um, accounts as well. We can initiate, um, but wages, Centrelink, um, gambling, which is often a contentious issue in family law matters potentially. Um, ATM withdrawals is another big one. And as you can see here, um, the expenses, they're categorised into 52 different um, categories. So that's a summary um, over the, the period. But then as you go down, um, it then breaks down those transactions. So if we go down to ATM withdrawals, which sometimes uh, being in the industry for a long time, um, that's quite a time-consuming task of going through the, the various um, 
withdrawals from that account. Um, so you can click to view transactions, say on other credits, um, and you can look at what particular transactions have been made. Um, you then get all of the transaction data. So here's the transaction data and description. You can type in like transfer from Paul Harris and you it will bring up um, all of those um, transactions. Um, so it's quite helpful to be able to search those transactions electronically. So it's really useful, Ilion bank statements. Um, the, last, the last element, when you get all of these documents, how can you disclose those to the other side and what reporting is available? So we might show you that on a more detailed um, matter. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I'm just going to go back into my demo that I've got here. Uh, so as you can see, um, your client can upload files manually. You can use the bank statements um, integration to automatically get those files uh, from your bank. Um, and then so what you can do now, um, let's have a look here. So um, against 2 Jacks Avenue, we can see here that we've got some property valuations have been uploaded. When I'm ready to disclose these, I just go edit. And then under disclosure here, by default, everything's marked as private. But then when I'm ready, I can explicitly change this over to disclosed. And then what I can do is if I want to make um, send this file uh, to the other side, what I can do is just go to um, this disclosure portal and I can copy this link here. And what this does, I would just send this in an email to the other side. What they would do is they would then... Um, automatically have access to this view here. So this is the matter, but just a, uh, a stripped down view of it. Um, it only reveals things that have been disclosed. So I've disclosed at the moment these three files here, uh, the property valuation, a tax document, and a financial statement on the business. And um, I can then, you know, kind of browse through the entire structure of the matter here. Um, and then when I'm ready to download something, so the financial statement for the business, I just click the download button and, and I can access it. So this is highly regulated and controlled by you. You choose which files you want to um, uh, allow access to and you can revoke that access at any point in time. And the intention here is to help you move away from uh, sending files via email in a really unstructured and cluttered way and provide easy access to the files that you want to disclose with people uh, via a one-click uh, link that you can send in an email. And each time they visit that link, um, they will have access to any files that you have disclosed at that point in time. And once you've done that, you can then generate entire reports around your matter attachments. They're available um, so as indexes. You can get that in Microsoft Word um, or Excel. Um, so, for instance, the Word one, let's just have a look at this. So, we've got attachments against a variety of different things. Hope you can see that on the screen there. Uh, so, you can see two Jacks Avenue. There's the two attachments. Um, there we can see Jack's Plumbing's got a couple of attachments against it as well, uh, so on and so forth. And we've, um, we've built in all the hyperlinks. So, for instance, if you want to go back into Jack's Plumbing from this Microsoft Word file, you can do that. Just click on here. That's going to take you straight back into family property. It's going to open up this matter um, and it's also going to open up the record. Uh, there you go on Jack's Plumbing. And same with the links to the files. I could click them um, and it would automatically download those files. Um, for me as well. Now you can also get this in um, an Excel spreadsheet format as well. So just open up this and show you uh, a bit of a different version. Um, here you can see the Excel spreadsheet containing, um, so all of the, the files are grouped together um, and uh, you've got information on when it was uploaded, who uploaded it, um, and you can um, apply those dates around when you actually disclose them um, or when you receive those files from the client. So you've got a full audit and history log around all of the activity, around all of the files that you store in a matter in family property. And you can add those dates through family property, as you know, um, against those items and documents. Um, so what we might do now, just conscious of time, um, if you've got any questions, um, please go to, to the Q&A box. Um, that would be helpful. Um, but we might go back to our slides now. Um, and if you have any questions um, about family property and want to see anything further, um, please let us know. But some of the questions that people ask, standard questions, um, uh, in relation, so there's some questions here. Firstly, there's often a question around IT and security. So we've prepared a slide in regards to that. Tim, did you want to talk through IT and security? Um, yeah, sure. So um, we do have a slide there um, that highlights some of the um, 
the, the important factors of that. Uh, so first of all, um, you know, family property does support what you call two-factor authentication, uh, which is the same as probably what you've got on your net banking account, which is each time you go to log in, you put in your username and password, and then um, you will be prompted to enter any unique one-time code, which will be available from your mobile phone only. So family property does support that level of two-factor authentication on uh, the accounts. Um, the second point just highlights the fact that everything is encrypted from the very start to the end. Um, the information is stored in such a way that nobody um, who, who could access the information could actually read it or make sense of it. Um, everything is stored in Sydney, Australia. Data never goes offshore. We don't send it to any third party processors. Uh, so nobody else has access to this in, in this information in any way, shape or form. We do get monthly security penetration testing. Effectively, what that means is that we get a third party independent vendor who is constantly checking um, and, and testing and approving uh, the platform from a security point of view. And everything is built from the ground up in Australia. So this is a tool that has been built in Australia for the way uh, that family property matters are handled in Australia. Um, and uh, the entire team is here in Australia. There is a question around the disclosure portal. The question is, in relation to the disclosure portal, does the other side need to have an account with family property to access this? Um, the answer to that is no. Um, instead of what often family lawyers are doing these days are scanning the information um, into the computer and putting it as an attachment and sending it via email, um, which is quite a time-consuming process, um, instead you get the shareable link and you send that shareable link only to the other side and the other side, when they click on that shareable link, they'll be brought to that screen which will only have the documents that have been disclosed. So, no, they don't need to have a family property account um, and it is a shareable link that we don't send automatically. We did consider that, but it is best for you to send that just the, the shareable link um, and then that they have access to that portal. Other questions? A question about costs. Um, often we get questions about costs, of course. Um, so costs, um, we've got a slide on that as well. Um, the pricing for family property per firm, um, so that's a law firm or a mediation firm. Um, did you want to discuss that, Tim? Uh, yeah, so it's just a simple um, annual subscription of four nine nine. Uh, so that covers things like unlimited users um, and storage and hosting for your firm um, using family property. Uh, and then it's just a pay-as-you-go per matter charge. So each time that you create a matter, you can use the questionnaire um, and run through as many matters as you like using the questionnaire. But then when you want to upgrade that matter across into the dashboard, so that's the screen that's got the balance sheet and the document automation, uh, then it's just a, uh, a charge of $85, um, just once off. Uh, per matter. We find that a lot of firms um, uh, do um, consider those as disbursements and, and um, do handle that $85 charge in that way. Um, of course, uh, but that's completely up to you. So we do try and keep our um, pricing as simple and as straightforward as possible uh, for sole practitioners um, all the way to larger firms as well. Another key part of our pricing um, is training um, and, uh, and set up. And so we do have a slide there on a variety of different packages that we do have when it comes to getting up and running with family property. Uh, we do offer two hours of online training, which is probably the easiest way to get started. Um, and that's at 399 all the way up to a complete package. Um, so both our premium and complete include a setup where we will actually set up um, family property for your firm. So that's branding and customization of those document templates um, and all of those aspects. Whereas the complete training um, includes face-to-face um, -face training with two trainers who um, can potentially come to your office and train your entire staff um, and follow up sessions. So we certainly want to make sure that you, you can hit the ground running with family property and that you can get the most out of it. Um, and so, yeah, we, we really do encourage, uh, you know, um, that you do um, uptake training. Um, but, yeah, Family Property definitely is a self-service platform. You can get up and running uh, yourself, but there are other training options um, that we do have. So in terms of today, um, we would like to um, – uh, 
encourage you to give Family Property a go. You can sign up for a 14-day free trial. It is free. You can get in there. You can create a matter. You have access to all of the features that we showed you today. You can populate balance sheets and you can download those reports. You can try out the questionnaire. Um, and there's really um, the only limitation that we put on you is that you can um, uh, create one matter in that trial. But we also give you four matters that are in various stages so that you can click in there and see how it works um, without having to actually go through and populate that. So if you want to do that, head across to um, app.familyproperty.com.au slash login. That's app.familyproperty.com.au slash login. Um, click sign up, select the left box, which is I'm a law firm mediator or an organization and finish the, the, the sign up process there. Um, we would also like to um, extend a, a little bit of a um, an offer for um, you for attending today. Um, so certainly if you'd like to subscribe, um, we would like to offer you 50% off our annual subscription. Um, so that's off the 499 um, in the first year. And all you need to do is put in that code there that's on the screen, which is MI2020. So that's MI2020. Um, there will be a place to put that in when you actually do um, sign up. So when you go through the sign up, there will be a place that you can put in that code. Um, and then when you do subscribe, um, you'll get 50% discount off that 499. And, and feel free to reach out to us. Um, as Tim said at the beginning, um, we're continuing to enhance the product. We really welcome feedback. Um, the product is going into different markets in the family law ec ecosystem, including law firms, private mediators, family relationships, centres um, and other not-for-profit organisations. Um, and we're really excited to see um, the traction that we're getting with helping um, family law professionals to focus on outcomes, um, not admin, and really save the help families who are going through this really difficult time in their life to save time, um, money, stress, dignity um, and relationships. So, and that's our vision. Our vision is to, to help you, um, to help your clients. And we value um, your, your time today. And please feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, I think Christine is going to give a, a final spiel as to next steps. Um, but do visit our website. Um, and if and try try out family property as Tim said. There's four four demo matters, um, and we, we would love to hear from you, Christine. Thanks, Fiona and Tim. That was an amazing demonstration. It was really interesting to see how family property is being used to increase team productivity, inspire greater employee confidence, and reduce time intensive and manual non billable work. A huge thank you to all of you who have attended today. Um, on that note, um, we will draw to a close. So as you know, the Centre for Legal Innovation is very much focused on these types of webinars, this type of information sharing, collaboration and experience exchange. We're all about practical solutions. There will be many more webinars coming up in the Legal Techie Tuesday series in 2020, so don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter or Facebook for announcements. We look forward to welcoming you back to one of our events and thank you again very much for joining us today. Thank you, Tim and Fiona. Thank you. And thank you to the Centre for Legal Innovation and to our Law Tech Hub. We're in the Law Tech Hub in Sydney, um, thanks to Lander and Rogers and YBF Ventures. Um, and thank you, Christine, for hosting it today. My pleasure. Thank everyone for attending. Okay, thank you. Bye.